Now, where to really got its start with all the mapping APIs that were released four or five years ago. But there comes a time when you start to question how proprietary should they be and what type of control should the actual devs who are using them have over them. And Adam's here to ponder that question. Please welcome Adam Devander. Thanks, Brady. Thanks, everyone. Tonight, I would like to talk about mapping APIs and uh, why I believe that a standardized, write-it-once approach is the right way, especially for encouraging new developers to join the Geo community. And the Geo community is really old. Uh, maps have been used as a, uh, maps are the best way to show location data still. Of course, now we have databases, and we have web maps, and we have mapping APIs, um, JavaScript APIs by Google and Yahoo and Microsoft and many others uh, to visualize our data on a map that way. Now, those are, those are open to everyone, but if you look close, the data underneath is closed. But I'm not going to talk any more about that tonight. Uh, that's an entire other discussion about the data underneath the maps. I'm a lot more interested in the application interface that uh, programmers use uh, to create the maps. So I'm writing a book right now on mapping APIs, a cookbook, and I realized I had trouble trying to decide how can I introduce someone new to this when they basically have to choose a horse before they've even written a map, before they've even created a map. So there are open source projects that have solved this problem, uh, including Mapstraction, which sits on top of the API and provides a standard interface. Now, Pamela Fox thinks that, uh, that proprietary apps are, uh, uh, maps are great, as are open source and, uh, and wrapper APIs, which is what Mapstraction is, uh, but that the wrapper APIs are for ones where developers want everything, which is pretty much every developer I've met. Uh, so we're talking about standardization here, a single interface to be able to create the maps. And with that often comes the worry about will that stifle innovation? Will street views ever make it into an API if Google has to worry about it not being part of the standard that's already there? And I think that's certainly a worry. Now, uh, Andrew Turner, who is involved in many geo things as well as uh, Mapstraction, he says that we need the, where the functionality is standard, that's where we provide the standard interfaces. And a very common uh, reaction to that argument is, well, then you're going to get watered down, lowest common denominator solutions. And I have one counterexample to that using Mapstraction, which is that before, so Mapstraction has something that allows you to zoom in and center on only the markers that are on the page. Well, they had that before all of the providers had done that. So in this case, Mapstraction, Mapstraction was actually able to innovate on its standard set of uh, uh, API calls. Uh, so if we're going to talk about standards in the web, the web loves standards. So let's look at some other examples like HTML and uh, CSS, XML. Well, wherever there is something that's being used a lot, where it's uh, big, like video on the web has been the past few years, that's a place where standards might occur. The video tag is added in HTML5, and it standardizes the way that you include, that you embed uh, videos on a page, which normally is kind of a hack. So would there be a map tag? There's actually already a map tag, uh, but we'd, so we'd have to call it something different. But if you start to scope that out, it starts to look like KML, which is a standard. Uh, Nick, I should say, was not talking about KML. Um, and he did say standards are great. Uh, but he also acknowledged that there's kind of that dark side of standards that we've been talking about. So he said, make a standard based on demand. So WordPress and Firefox have done that they aren't standards, but uh, by providing a way to uh, program plugins. So you're not contributing to the core, you're contributing a plugin, which if it's great, then it bubbles up to the top and gets included in the core. Something similar that I'd like to see providers do is to provide open hooks so that uh, they, they have certain, a certain base level of, um, of an interface to their, um, 
to their API so that new users uh, don't have to choose. They can sample different providers before choosing what they actually want to do. So that's my answer to the question. I would love to hear what you all think. Uh, call me out on Twitter. Uh, visit my book site, mapscripting.com, and I look forward to discussing it with you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adam.